We are the last line of defense. Like modern day gladiators, the special response team work out every day to remain in peak physical condition so that officers can withstand the strain of tactical operations for hours on end. Working out and, getting, and building up your strength of that, not only your upper body, but your legs and your hips, uh, makes a world of difference. Melvin Gonzalez has one of the most dangerous jobs in the unit. Police Police Operating the shield, he is first through the door when SRT attack a target address. Police Nothing in the gym can recreate the shape, the weight, and the feel of the shield. So I found that the best way to train for using the shield is actually using the shield. I've come up with a couple of different exercises that help me out. One of them is just a standard straight lunge where I'll hold the shield right in front of me here, and I'll just do squats. Of course, to make it the most realistic, I should be wearing my body armor and my helmet, and there are days where I'll do that also. Hammerman Larry Alleman works relentlessly on improving his strength in an effort to smash down doors in one blow and maximize his team's elements of surprise. This is a 16-pound sledgehammer. This is one of the ones that we use on the team. We have four. We have a 12, a 14, a 16, and a 20. A 20 being the heaviest one that we have there. I've used the 20 pounds on several occasions, and, it, and it's fantastic. But I, I, I seem to get a better thrust with the 16-pound hammer. Down. So it's all, about, it's all about your shoulders, your arms to hold up the, the actual weight, and then your legs to pivot you through the movement and into the target through that door, through that door at all times. There's two types of exercises that I'll do with this simulated staircase. So this is more slow methodical where I'm just mimicking going upstairs and then I'll just come right back down again. I absolutely believe that these exercises and the intensity level that we put into our training can absolutely save our life. Get out! The Special Response Team is an elite SWAT unit, an acronym for Special Weapons and Tactics. Therefore, each member of the team practices in marksmanship to maintain accurate shooting skills. The very best marksmen are trained into snipers, selected for their maturity, patience, and ability to make independent decisions over a long period of time. Today, the snipers are simulating a hostage rescue by shooting at targets through three-inch glass. The most important thing is the object that you're engaging needs to be as close to that glass as humanly possible. After the other officers have left for the evening, one of SRT's expert snipers, Sergeant Ray Melcon, works on his one-shot skills. In, in saving lives, failure is never an option. The sniper rifle probably signifies the precision, the absolute uh, final option, and, and the ability to, to eliminate a threat as, as precisely and surgically as possible. Four pounds of, of trigger pulls which separates the, the end of, of somebody's life. However, you also have to look at it from the flip side that we're, the reason we're doing it is to save somebody's life. Most of SRT's work involves combating Miami's most dangerous criminals. But they also handle other types of life-threatening situations. 
later that evening in the city of Homestead, 20 miles south of Miami Beach. SRT have an emergency call out. A young white male has tried to kill himself. Having traced the subject to his house, the Miami-Dade Police Department have set up a control center a few blocks away. My concern now with the plan is that I don't want to make him feel like we're squeezing him. Sergeant Ray Melkin takes a team of officers to form a perimeter around the subject's house. Explain to me why these situations can be quite dangerous. Obviously, uh, the, uh, the the lack of, of specific information, the, uh, the possibility of suicide by cop, uh, the concern is, because we've had instances like this where they lie in wait because they don't have the nerve to kill themselves and they might be precipitating a situation where, where we have to take that kind of action. So it's, that's never a good thing for us. When somebody doesn't have the care for their own lives, they're going to have that much less care for us. Sarge! Yeah. Okay, just stand by. We're looking at the house right there, guys. Suicide by cop is where a person deliberately threatens law enforcement officers with a lethal weapon, provoking them to shoot. We've got uh, the four side covered to supplement the sniper teams on the one, two, and three side. According to the FBI, over a third of all police shootings are suspected of being suicide by cop. SRT's main concern is are they about to be drawn into another one? Twenty miles south of Miami Beach, SRT have been called in to resolve a potential suicide by cop, where an individual provokes the police in order to get himself shot. Having pinpointed the subject to his house, SRT have arrived outside. Gene, you in? Yep. And your partner's in? Yep. So it's time to you. All right, Tom, we're ready to move. Go ahead. Sergeant Herrera's unit drive their armored Bearcat vehicles slowly up to the property to see if anyone is at home. After spotting a glimpse of what could have been the suspect, SRT call on negotiators to try and start a dialogue with him from the protection of the armored Bearcat. Frank, my name is Dan. I'm with the uh, police department. Do me a favor. We're, we're concerned about your safety. If you can hear us, turn on the light in your house, please. We'll pick up the phone and call. Frank, we're here to help you. We want to we wanna help you out. Come out and uh, talk to us. We'll pick up the phone, okay? Do me a favor. Pick up the phone or turn on the light in the house so that we can we know that you're okay and you can hear us. <laughs> The negotiators try for one and a half hours to contact the subject, but there's no response. In the meantime, SRT try to remain patient and alert. The problem with these uh, protected callouts, where we're trying to communicate and we're not getting to communicate back, is you start to develop a lull, and it's human nature to start dropping your guard. So I prefer to, to rotate my personnel to have the lead, so that way they can have the utmost attention. At the same time, it lets my guys not necessarily physically take a break, but mentally take a break, and then rotate them back in, you know, anywhere from 15 to 30 minute intervals. Anything can go on at any minute. Uh, right now it's quiet. This guy decides he had enough, pop a couple rounds at the truck, and next thing you know it, we went from uh, zero to 10. So we have to be ready for that. Earlier in the evening, the suicidal man was involved in a hit-and-run incident. Research has shown that an individual intent on being killed by the police often injures or kills innocents to attract a swift and deadly response. Latest intelligence reveals that the subject is also armed. Yeah, well, we're just getting additional information from the father. Apparently it was debriefed by negotiators that the subject definitely has possession of a shotgun with a laser sight attached to it, a 45, but that he's been doing a lot of shooting practice in the last uh, couple months and has shown his father uh, his accuracy capabilities and has been known to have approximately 500 rounds inside the house. Three hours after arriving at the subject's house, 
SRT decide to softly advance proceedings by bringing in the robots. Frank, we don't want to hurt you. We want to help you. We're going to be breaking a window to put a phone in so that we can speak with you. Right now, we're using two robots. One is primary for the purpose of breaching. The other one is designed to bring up a, a phone to try to drop it in the area, advise him in the event that he hasn't been able to communicate it from his phone. They were offering a, a direct line to the negotiators. The second robot carries the telephone to the property, as SRT are reluctant at this stage to enter the subject's home. If he is a suicide by cop candidate, He'll be hoping that the elite police unit will confront him with all guns blazing. The robot in this particular situation, it's helpful because it's an inanimate object. We don't have to expose our uh, you know, live officers and operators just for the mere sake of trying to probe and get a visual inside the structure. We try to leave, leave the final option of committing our personnel to making an entry. It's a very aggressive and offensive move, no matter how you look at it. Uh, even though our intent is merely to make contact and make sure the subject's okay. But considering the things that have happened with this particular individual or suicide by cop situation, anytime you, you put pressure on it, all, you, all we end up doing is precipitating uh, a negative response. The subject doesn't pick up the phone, but SRT believe they can see the outline of a man in the front room. There's a figure. They can't. They can't decide if it's the subject up against the wall, or it's a figurine, or some type of statue. Put it right there, the front left. Just clear of that. Just keep angling it forward so I can. All right, start angling it forward. Watch out. Sergeant Herrera decides to end the uncertainty by taking a closer look. Take up the phone so that we can talk. We just want to talk. We don't want to hurt you. Do me a favor, oh, hold the point on this on this right side window over here. Give me points on this window real quick. What are you doing? I'm just gonna peek in here and see if I can see what the hell this thing is. After four hours of trying to negotiate with the suicidal man, SRT temporarily suspend proceedings whilst they consider their next move. During the lull, Ray reflects on his first experience of trying to save someone from the brink of death. I can recall quite vividly one of my first calls in my first year being a police officer that involved a, a drowning child. And uh, ironically, I happened to be very close, and I had just had a child myself, so it was very, it was very close to my heart. Upon arrival to the house, uh, I was able to make contact with the, the grandparents and, 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 and saw the child, the child appear lifeless. So I did every effort I could by working on the child and, and performing CPR. The happy ending was a couple months later, I got called up to the front desk, and there's a family that I barely recognize with cookies and presents to give to me because the child that basically had, had uh, was able to be revived and had recovered 100%, and that made my career. Prepare for gas. Another 20 minutes pass, then SRT decide to increase the stakes. We're going to prepare for chemical agents to deploy some chemical agents inside the structure in hopes that, that that's going to instigate him to make contact or, or come on out. Nobody's here to harm you. We want to talk to you, Frank. Please pick up the phone. Frank, pick up the phone. The team then use the robots to pour a chemical agent into the house that should flush the suicidal male out into the open. 
Officers then use multi-launchers to ensure that the chemical agent has reached all parts of the house. Fifteen minutes later, SRT conclude that the subject is unlikely to appear, so they prepare to enter the house and find him. The plan is, if all this fails and we've got to come into entry, I'm going to be driving this, bear, this truck right through the fence and getting as close to that rear door as possible to have a secondary entry point. George, let me set up so I can support your entry at the rear. We're going to move the truck in a position so we can get into the backyard. SRT use their truck to ram the fence so that Ray and his men can move in to surround the back of the property. While Sergeant Herrera's entry team assault the front. When SRT enter the kitchen, they discover a dead body, a gun, and a bullet wound to the head. The entry team was able to identify and locate the, the potential subject in the kitchen, uh, apparently deceased from a, a self-inflicted gunshot wound. However, homicide inve investigators are going to do a follow-up investigation to verify the veracity of that. It's going to be an unfortunate outcome for the family, an unfortunate outcome for the individual. Uh, just recently, a uh, fire rescue did verify that the uh, subject is, is, is deceased, and unfortunately, he leaves a lot of sadness in his wake. The positive thing that comes out of this is we get to go home, hug our families, and appreciate the things that we do have, and, uh, and, and never forsake the things that we've accomplished. Based on the evidence found by investigators, it appears to have been a suicide. In America, one person commits suicide every 17 minutes. Miami is America's fourth richest city, yet 30% of its population live below the poverty line. Fisher Island in Miami Beach is the country's richest postcode, where an average home costs $5 million. 20 miles south, Sergeant George Herrera is in West Perrine, one of America's poorest areas, where drug crime has become an epidemic. Today we're in a police car, so this area is so used to seeing police officers that they, they'll... Uh, they, they'll just think that we're patrolling the streets. Like up ahead, if you, if you look straight up, you'll see that there are two off, two uniform officers arriving on a call right now. You guys good? Everything all right? Take care of yourselves. So they're handling some type of call. And now uh, everyone in the area probably thinks that we're responding to that call. So now we're going to turn back around and we'll start driving down the, uh, the opposite blocks near the house that we are actually going to go to. We've hit this house before. You we've hit, sign up. Absolutely. We've hit this house before. We've hit, we've hit that house before. We've hit that house before. We've hit this house before. This corner house here, the one that says it's for rent, we hit that. In the back of this house, you're going to see that there's a fence line. We had someone throw uh, a bunch of narcotics, um, crack rocks, in a, in a baby's diaper. He ran out the back door that's, uh, that's right to the rear there. 
This is another house that we've hit multiple times. George is on a drive-by, an intelligence gathering mission for SRT's next high-risk drug warrant. His team hit the target address two weeks ago. But there was no one in. We did find a small quantity of uh, narcotics within the actual house. For the investigation since that date, the investigators have now told me that not only is the subject selling uh, narcotics within the area, but that he is now back in the same house and selling even larger quantities than what we were looking for originally. For that reason, we're going back, verifying the information on the house and making sure that nothing has changed so that we can serve the warrant tomorrow and, uh, in my estimation, put away a guy who needs to go to jail immediately. In the distance, the suspect continues to do business, unaware of what's about to hit him. Having graduated top of his class at SRT's training academy, rookie Dave Rivera has started his trial with all three units of the special response team. Good job, David, good job. If Dave becomes a member of this elite police unit, it will be a dream come true for a kid who was once bullied and overweight. I hate being always known as, as a nerd. Dave has been placed under extreme pressure. What, you don't like to eat with the 30 guys? Or what's the problem? Right now, the guys just don't trust him. He's a new guy, he's the outsider, so he's gotta prove himself. He's made mistakes. The rookie almost passed his turn. But has also proved himself in real combat situations. Go, go, go! Pull was, was good. I gotta, I gotta give him some credit on the pull. He made up for everything else. One. Two, three, now four, he's entering five, the final phase six, to become seven, a fully fledged eight, member nine, of SRT. Five. We hit this house two weeks ago. Apparently the subject got a little hinky. He got wind from his, uh, his lookouts that there was a lot of police activity. Rivera and Phil, Rivera's already got the information. Shadow box all the way around the back. Having driven the troop carrier and then the armored Bearcat, Dave the Rookie has now been trusted to work the perimeter for a drug warrant in the area of West Perrine. Dave's going to set up the, uh, the, the sure step, and he's going to take a point over the top. You guys are specifically there for containment. All right, guys, let's get out of here. Let's go. Today is Friday the 13th, and I am not superstitious, but I'll tell you what, he's subject going to have a bit of bad luck today. Dave works closely with his field training officer, Phil Frazin, who has become his mentor. He's doing well, he's progressing well, and he takes a lot of heat from the guys. So all the pressure that he's getting on him, even someone like me been on for a while, we can't handle it sometimes. So the pressure on him is uh, unbelievable. Well, I'll lead. You just carry the ladder and the bank. Let me be in front of you with the shotgun and uh, the bridge. Like right. right. My FT always got a little soft spot for me. He's uh, been on the department for 27 years, so very experienced operator, very experienced officer, and uh, I definitely look up to him. And he cares for me like a, like a big brother. Phil, give him a little smile. What? Give him a little smile. A little smile, bro. <laughs> little smile. Here we go, switching out, switching out. When he jumps off, give me a sec so I can pull the ladder out. Here we go. Coming up. Clear right, clear right, clear right, clear right. Get on the ground, get on the ground! Get on the ground. Get on the ground, get on the ground! Get on the ground, get on the ground! Door. Get ready. What is that adrenaline rush like when your foot hits the pavement? It's like getting on one of those rides at a carnival. They pull you up real high in the air, and then all of a sudden they let you go, and you fall and fall and fall, but you know you're going to be all right, because you got that safety ladder, 
It's the way I feel when, uh, when I get off the Bearcat with these guys. These guys are like my safety line, basically. Whilst Dave covers the rear of the house, his field training officer covers him. Well, you don't have to like the guy. You get to separate your personal uh, relationships to on the job. Me and him get along good, so it's, it's a little easier. But uh, sometimes that can get in the way when you have to uh, counsel him or get on his butt a little bit. Uh, you know, that might hinder a little bit, but still, he's got to take it like a man. If he screws up, he'll do better next time, and uh, I'm going to let him, so, let him know. As the rookie holds the perimeter, the entry team finish securing their targets and find large quantities of marijuana, cocaine, and cash. The suspects are later charged with drug-related offences. Officer Rivera did an outstanding job. He immediately took the position that I needed him to take and uh, contained any possible runners from the backyard. Based on the, uh, the, the short time that he's been here, his short tenure in SRT, the expectations for him are very high. Um, the, the type of demeanor that he, uh, he, he portrays and the professionalism that he brings to this job, he's going to do phenomenal as an SRT operator. The rookie's bid to become a member of SRT began on a tryout day, an assessment of Miami-Dade police officers who were keen to join the elite police unit. Well, this was uh, an experience I went through just about a year ago. So what's going through their minds is they're extremely stressed out. They have all these eyes watching them. He's got a good stride. Nice stride, yeah. Nice long, long stride. stride. You really need to, to put forth the, the maximum effort possible because the selection process to come over starts from day one. This year, another 25 hopefuls are put through a rigorous physical examination. Push, 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 there you go. If they pass, they'll qualify for SRT's academy, which is three weeks long and is even tougher. I see some good potential here. There's, there's, there's uh, people here that I've actually uh, had the privilege of training in the academy. And even back then, you could see that they had a fire inside of them. If an officer fails one discipline, he cannot proceed to the next. Get up. Get up. After just two tasks, many candidates are already struggling. And some have found it all too much. You all right? Yeah, just throw up right You're here for a reason, right? Yep. All right, let's get out there. Come on, fine, push. Come on, Did I feel this one before? Yes. Yeah. All right, Start. Next, Ready. the officers must tread Go. water for 15 minutes a prerequisite for future waterborne training. What we try and do is test where they are physically before they get into uh, even the school um, to find out what type of shape they're in uh, strength-wise because obviously we carry extra equipment on us. But I think the most important as aspect of, of the testing is it, it allows you to get into the uh, applicant's head, their mindset. You know, how badly do they want to be here? And you'll find inevitably, you know, one or two people will just call it quits. Martinez, open your eyes. Open it. I'm talking to you. You think you're gonna get into school? You don't know. Why are you here? Martinez, this is perfect conditions. You're in a pool. Can you imagine if there's waves? The purpose of this is not to see if you can float. It's where you can tread water. And you don't even have any gear on. So if you're struggling that much in this water, you're gonna drown out there. <laughs> After 10 minutes, one candidate seems to be going under. Do it again. He's got you, man. He's got you. Better do it again. Now it's time to test the candidates' nerves on the firing range.
The test demands 90% accuracy within the center part of the target, known as the peanut. After the first round, many of the officers are already disqualified. The reason this particular candidate uh, disqualified is because he missed too many rounds out of the peanut. All right, it's a 48 round course. Out of the 48, he has 12 rounds out of the peanut. So he has to do a second try. Um, unless he, uh, he pulls a miracle, he's not gonna make it. All right, the guys that passed, go ahead. Congratulations on making the tryouts for SRT 48. Congratulations. Um, that, that's the good side. The bad side is um, some of you made it by the skin of your teeth, all right? Barely, some of you, and you know who you are. There is probably, all right, and some of you know me, I'm, I'm a straight shooter, I'm gonna tell you the way it is. I'm not gonna sugarcoat things. Right now, from what I've seen, there is probably three of you that are pretty close to ready physically. The rest of you don't have a clue what you're getting yourself into. With not enough candidates for the course, SRT school is postponed to later in the year. Only the top 1% of the Miami-Dade Police Department has the strength, stamina and endurance to make it into the special response team. Dave the Rookie continues his training with George Herrera's Unit 20. Uh, the tough love we give the, uh, the new recruits, or the rookies rather, uh, it gives them a little extra, extra pressure, puts uh, more on their shoulders, and, and you know, basically what we're trying to do is see how they're going to react under pressure. The team are piling more responsibility onto Dave's shoulders. Today he's to throw his first stun grenade, also known as a flashbang. When you can see through the house, when you see that the Bearcat comes to a stop, when we make our way through the fence, give us like five seconds after the Bearcat gets to a stop and deploy the bang automatically. You good? Good. You're looking nice today. Thank you. You're looking very ready. Feel the calm Put before your hand out. You ready? To go. Actually, I'm wearing gloves. Let me. Put, put it down. This is put a stress it, test. Put stress put test. It, that's just that's just coffee shivers, man. Oh. That's no, coffee no, shivers. No, no, no. <laughs> it does have an added increase of responsibility, and that, with that responsibility also comes trust. So obviously, one with the other, positive correlation, you'll see that they trust me more. That's why they gave me a little bit more responsibility. What do we got? First one, second one? This is the first one. We'll have windows and doors and everything, so we'll be good there. But on that one is the one that they're gonna need the bang on the pull. Yeah, look for a door, sliding door, or something like that, unless all three. As always, Phil Frazen, the rookie's field training officer, will be watching his every move. If I hear bravo, bravo, if I'm not looking at you, that means I know you're on target and I don't have to be concerned about you. We're hitting one house first. After we finish the secondary search, hand it over to narcotics detectives. We're going to a secondary house a block away. Entry team on both warrants, on both warrants, is going to be the same. Shield's going to be Roman, Kenny Acevedo one, Quesada two. This drugs warrant is a little different, as the team will be hitting two addresses, one around the corner from the other. At the second target, the rookie will be deploying his flashbang. Automatic bang on the three side. When you start seeing us go on foot and you hear the chain, o the, the chain link fence open, you can drop it back there, all right? Anything else? All right, guys, let's go. Phil and Dave quickly head around the back of the target to make sure that no suspects okay. try to slip away. You're good, you're good? The entry team arrest their targets, 
and find two AK-47s, the most feared weapon on the streets of America. One of the suspects is later charged with possession of firearms by a convicted felon. Hey, Kenny, you clear? We're good to go. SRT hand them over to detectives and then jump back onto the Bearcat to their next target before any lookouts can tip off the suspects. There you go. We're moving, we're moving. Dave readies himself to throw the flashbang, a device used to divert the suspect's attention away from the entry team. Phil and Rivera, this is your open lot. This is your open lot, the White House behind it. The rookie is dropped off at the back of the target to deploy his flashbang, whilst the rest of the team head around the front. Get on the ground, get on the ground, get on the ground. Clear the suspects have been successfully detained, but the rookie has some searching to do. Uh, right now, uh, we're looking for a deployed uh, bang, flash bang. The body is uh, somewhere in this uh, mess. So before we leave, we're gonna try to uh, give it a 100% search for it so we can uh, recover the flash uh, bang body. All flash bangs must be recovered as they're reusable, and more importantly, evidence. Uh, David Rivera made a uh, rookie mistake. You know, there was an open area and then there was a cluttered area, and he, uh, in the heat of the moment, threw the uh, diversionary device in a cluttered area, so it's uh, become difficult to find it now. Dave couldn't find the flashbang on the ground, so he's been instructed to look higher up. <laughs> hey, I didn't close my eyes, rookie. I saw the flashbang go in the air and go boom, and I go check the roof. The flashbang ended up uh, popping up on the roof, so we had to do a little extra searching for it. Is this a rookie mistake? Oh! How have the guys been treating you for this? It's actually a spectacular mistake, not a rookie. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to the, the, the briefing, man. Despite making another rookie mistake, you can't keep a good man down. No matter what, even, even the worst day is still the best day. And I love coming to work every single day. Pull, 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 pull. Police search warrant! Police search warrant! Police search warrant! After three intense months, SRT's rookie, Dave Rivera, finally completes his SRT training. I got you. Sit down. You sure? Just sit down. I got you. As his trial has progressed, Dave has been given more and more responsibility to examine how he copes in combat situations. Search Today my job is perimeter point in the front area. So I'll be out in front. If anything happens, uh, any subjects out in front, it's my job to handle them, take them down. And uh, with an extra body, I'll be able to secure them. On a highly successful drugs warrant, Dave finally gets his chance to enter his first target address and search for suspects and evidence. As far as the, the rookie, Rivera, um, he's, uh, he's slowly uh, moving up um, in, uh, in the echelon of SRT. Uh, in this scenario, since I was pretty sure that we didn't have anybody in the attic, I gave him the opportunity to go up there and, uh, and search the attic, clear the attic. So, you know, little by little, he's, he's starting to move up. 
In the end, even Sergeant Manny Malgore has been impressed with the rookie's progress. We've proven that throughout the years, um, the more stress you put on, on these guys, if they can if they can get through it, if they survive at the end of the day and they still want to be here, then that's the guy you're looking for. To celebrate becoming the latest member of SRT, Dave's senior officers take him to a Florida Panthers ice hockey game. The Rook just graduated his second phase of SRT training, so we decided to take him out. I wouldn't usually hang out with him. He's a little bit of a geek, but, uh, you know, we're making an exception today. They've been kind enough to acknowledge the fact that I've been able to successfully pass my second phase. So. No, the rookie's doing great, but I like him. He's gonna, he's gonna do good. He's gonna grow up and learn to, uh, to be a good SWAT guy. He's my replacement. Well, if he's my replacement, then he's not doing a good job. But, uh, but if he's not my replacement, hey, he's gonna hang in there good. I like him. I am a direct reflection, direct reflection of his teaching. So, if you're a direct reflection of me, you're gonna be good, bro. Trust me on that one. Nah, then, then obviously I'll, I'll be doing well in this unit. Hey, squeeze in, squeeze in. While Dave tries out his cheerleading skills, his colleagues revealed that his real talent lies within SRT. The unit is so small. There's no room to have somebody in this unit that we cannot take the war with us. Right, so even though he may be in his learning phases, I would have no question whatsoever to go in a room with this man and be able to take care of my life just like I would take care of his. He is, without exception, probably one of the best guys that ever came out of the last watch school, and that's why he's in this unit now. Are you sure you made the right choice? Absolutely. I, I know I've made the right choice. To have the camaraderie, the teamwork, the ability to work out and train on, on a regular basis and, and just have that trust in your fellow man, I know I've made the right choice joining these band of brothers. The rookie is soon back under pressure. He's been asked by stadium officials to throw a T-shirt into the crowd. Let's hope he does a better job than with his flashbang. <laughs> 